Islam was connected with Ishmael in a question. But Islam is a sixth century religion, right? It, it arose in the sixth century under Muhammad. And Ishmael has nothing to do with Islam except that the Arabs were supposed to have adopted him. Okay. Okay. So right. why is it being connected? So it's true that Muhammad was born in the 6th century, he was born in the year 570. When he was 40 years old, his prophetic career began and it lasted for 23 years. In the Arabian Peninsula, a part of the world that God gave to the B'nai Yishmael, to the children of Yishmael, their holy book, the Quran, is written in Arabic and it did emerge out of an Arabic crucible and an Arab culture. There's, that is undeniable. And in Indonesia, where there are, there are as many Muslims in Indonesia as there are Arabs in the world. Okay. Um, they are reciting the Quran in Arabic. But there is something very interesting about the B'nai Ishmael. We could talk about them for a moment. And that is that God made a covenant with the children of Ishmael. And out of him would come a great nation. What is amazing is that for a very long time, all Muslims will tell you that the children of Ishmael were in a state of jahiliya. Jahiliya means stupidity or absence of knowledge, without knowledge. But they knew that they were B'nai Ishmael. And they never lost that misora. It was preserved. That's an amazing thing. I think the covenant that God made with the children of Ishmael is astounding that we could see with our eyes that it was preserved. Right. I'm here to say that the Jewish people believe that there's one deen that was given to Adam and given to Noah. This deen is, is uh, obligatory on all mankind. All the prophets follow the same deen and that the, each nation was given, each ummah was given its own sharia. That's what we say. Not only that, I claim that you are a proper believer, complete in every way. I'm, I'm, I really appreciate that thought, okay. seriously, and I'm being very sincere about this. And so I don't okay. really have much to say after okay. that. If you read Isaiah 42 carefully, which you do, I'm I sure you have. Good, right. So when it says, let, let the villages of Kedar lift up their voices, let them re okay, so, that, so you know who Kedar is, right? That's absolutely, that's a perfectly legitimate interpretation. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Let the desert and its cities lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar inhabits. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael named in the order of their birth. Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, and Kedar, Arabia and all the princes of Kedar were your favored dealers in lambs, rams, and goats. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. descendant from Ishmael and from their tribe Muhammad ultimately arose.
Yeah, yeah. When you talk about Daniel, Daniel, the name for Daniel was Ish Hamudot. Right. The person who was a man of delights. The word ham, um, Hamudot is the same root as Muhammad. He said that 470 years. I'm not talking about that, by no, the way. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not talking, talking about the, those passages. I'm talking about, this. I'm talking about that. I am talking about that passage. 470 years, the redemption would come. Now, 470 years after the destruction, when Herod, Herodian, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Hadrian plowed the Temple Mount. 132, 132. yeah. 132. Plus, what's 132 plus 470? That's a huge difference. 622. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What happened in 622? The Hadrian. Yes. So there were many Jewish people that believed that. Seventy weeks of years or 490 years have been decreed for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to seal up vision and prophecy and prophet, and to anoint the most holy place. How does one worship in the ancient world? So in the archaeology of temples in the ancient world, you have the Holy of Holies where the gods dwelt. You have the sacrificial altar where the animals are sacrificed. And in between, you have an incense altar. And where does incense come from? There's no incense grown in the Mediterranean area. Incense all derives from South Arabia. Sheva is Sheba probably the place where the queen came from. Then incense had to be transported north from here up into the Mediterranean where biblical sacrifices were held in the land of Israel as well. Now, Midian. Who married a Midianite in the biblical tradition? Who? Moses. Moses married a Midianite and Moses' children were children of Midianites. Okay? These are all names that are associated with Arab locations in Arabia, now, in the ancient world, there was a location right here, halfway between the south and the north. We call it Mecca today. It was in a perfect location to transport material from the south up into the north. And so, in the ancient world already, a Mecca seems to have been a center for the camel caravan business. We have a reference to that business in the Bible. So if you looked at Isaiah 60, this is a prophecy of what's going to happen in the future. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All they from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee, the rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. And I will glorify the house of my glory. the tabernacle which was the big tent that Moses used which was like the Kaaba by the way if you look at the tabernacle that Moses built it is like the Kaaba of Abraham and the temple of Solomon it was also like the Kaaba it's got one room and another room which is called the Holy of Holies and that's the way the Kaaba was built in the days of Abraham when it was rebuilt, you know, before the prophet, before his prophecy, وسلم, they did not have enough money that was pure, that didn't have any uh, usury in it to rebuild it the Abrahamic way. So they left, you know, the room of Ishmael, you know, which is where that white wall is that you go around. They left that out of the Kaaba, and because the Arabs became attached to that Kaaba, the prophet did not rebuild it. But that original Kaaba of Abraham in Mecca is just like the Temple of Solomon. I mean, we think of the temple as this big building, like the second temple of Herod and so forth. That's not the temple. That would be like thinking that the Kaaba was the great mosque of Mecca with all of its minarets. No, it, it houses the Kaaba, just as the temple in Jerusalem housed, you know, uh, the, um, the Beit al-Maqdis, you know, the room where the Maqdis was kept, which is called the Holy of Holies.